All right, we move ahead to one of the big winners in the sport this past weekend. The main event of CES 64 became the CES lightweight champion, his second title. Pretty slick submission win over Ryan De La Cruz. Reverse triangle in the third round. It was one-way traffic. And then he announces his retirement from the sport right in the middle of the CES cage. So let us say hello to Matt the Mangler Bissett, who was kind enough to join us just a few days after this surprising announcement. Matt, how are you? What's up, man? I'm doing good. It's good talking to you. Good talking to you as well. First things first, congratulations on the win, the second title, and on one hell of a career. Matt, you and I, we've been having these chats for several years now, and I didn't think we'd be having this type of conversation at this point in our careers, but life is a wild ride. So a, a few days later, is there, would you say there's like a sense of relief, some weight lifted off of your shoulders now that the fight is over and the announcement was officially made? <laughs> I think the 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 weight was lifted off my shoulders as soon as I uh, as soon as he tapped out to the reverse triangle. Um, today I want to fight. <laughs> <laughs> it's so fucked up. I just been I just been doing this for you know almost fifteen years. Every single day, two three times a day. It's all I wanted to do for so long. Um, but like I'm completely content with my decision. Like I'm not going to be you know, that guy that, uh, retires and then comes back two, three times. It's just, it's not going to happen. Um, but it's, uh, it's just something that I've done every single day for so long that <clears throat> it's, it's in my blood. Like I want to fight, I want to compete. And like, uh, training was always like, do it cause you love it. But the end goal is compete, win, get better, you know, grow your status throughout the sport. Uh, now like the goal is different. The goal is just to, I guess, have fun and, <laughs> you know, get better, uh, and then pass along my knowledge. And it's just something that I'm going to have to get used to. You kept telling, and you're a terrific self promoter, anybody who's followed you throughout your career. And you kept telling everybody in essence, this is the fight you don't want to miss. If you watch one fight of mine, make it this one. And I, yeah. and I think we know why. And of course, this is supposed to be the big grudge match with Bruce Boynton. All people have to do is follow both of you on social media to get both sides of that story in regards to what happened there. But this seemed, at least in my eyes, to be your decision for a while now. Like, when did you have those conversations with yourself, your family, your team that this next fight, that's it. We're done. I mean, um, I, th I think I honestly, I, I, I told everybody about it um, in like a, a Facebook live or I think it was Facebook, Facebook live, uh, back when I first got the call to the UFC, my wife and I decided that fighting Jamal Emmers was going to be my last fight. And that was at the beginning of 2018. Uh, it was going to be my last fight. And, uh, you know, it was obviously a really sad moment. 12 hours later, I get the call from the UFC saying I'm fighting. So it was like, Oh my God, it was like everything changed at that moment. So, you know, I fought my fight in the UFC and then, <clears throat> and then I, I got another fight in the UFC. Um, and you know, I lost both those with pretty close fights. And, uh, and then it was like, all right, you know, we're out of the UFC, but I can't go out like that. I fought dueling and that was a great fight. And I just, I, you know, I felt that, that rush, that, uh, a victory again. And I was like, you know what, let's continue this. And like, there was always on the talking to my wife, like, so what's next? So how many got left? How many got left? And uh, we decided upon two left um, last year, like middle of last year. And uh, it was going to be, they're both going to be for, uh, so the goal was, to, eh, no, the goal changed a little bit, but um, there was going to be two left. And then I took the short notice, semi-short notice fight against Jeremy Kennedy uh, for Bellator. So that was one. And then it was going to be one more left. Um, I also told uh, Jimmy Jr. and Pat Sullivan that I was, I would like to, take the lightweight strap and then drop down and, and defend the featherweight title one more time. Um, but that was before we had a couple big doors open in our lives. So um, those, those aren't going to be addressed uh, in this interview. Um, but, you know, um, probably five months ago, maybe ish, uh, it was 100% landed on that this was going to be the last fight. Um, it was going to be September 17th, no matter who the opponent was. And that's why it was so frustrating for me that, uh, Bruce did what he did because there's no fight now. Um, and it's not like, there's nothing I can do about it. There's nothing, you know, it's, it's been decided I'm done. And, uh, my life is more than just cage fighting. And, uh, you know, I think people, people understand that most people understand that, 
then there's going to be a select few that are like, dude, you got to keep fighting, not after a performance like that. And I'm like, I get it because in my back of my head, I'm like, dude, you got to keep fighting, not after a performance like that. <laughs> but um, I'm, I, I've am i been Matt Bissett a lot longer than I've been in Mangler. So uh, moving on. What was the walk to the cage like on Friday night? I mean, the decision was made, win, lose, or draw. This was it. <laughs> Knowing that was the last time you were making that walk, doing it in CES, you've been, I mean, CES is home to you. It's you're, you're one of the face of the company. You've believed in them. They've treated you so well and vice versa. How would you describe that final walk to the cage? Yeah, it's, it's funny. That's a great question because I've had that walk, like the last walk about, a million times in my own head, in my head. Like, what's it going to be like? What song am I going to walk out to? How many people are going to be there? What's it going to be like? Uh, how loud is it going to be? Where is it going to be? All this would like go through your head. And then like, um, you know, when I, when I walked up to the CES curtain there, I was like, fuck yeah. Just got so content real quick and um, like real, real quick. And I honestly didn't think about anything else except for the cage. So that walk to the cage, it was just all business, man. There were people to my right and left and like, couldn't tell you exactly who was there. It was just like, fuck man, business time. And it was like, it, as soon as that clicked in, I never, I didn't think about anything else other than the fight during the fight. I didn't think about the walk, the last, the, 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 the last hurrah, nothing existed except, except for get it done. And uh, I'm glad that happened because I've had, like I said, 36 fights. Not one of the times have I ever thought about what was happening in my life outside of that fight. Um, and that's w one thing that's always crossed my mind. Like, am I going to be able to like not think about X, Y, Z while I'm in the cage? And, and you're always like, am I going to think about this, that, or the next thing? So you got a lot of, everybody's got a lot of stuff that's going on in their life. And are they going to be able to manage those emotions and thoughts throughout like the, the craziness in the fight. And I've never once thought about anything, but the fight. And I've, uh, I guess that's just the, I don't know what that is. Maybe that's just the, the gamer and the focus that I've had. When you sort of put that timetable on everything, like two more fights, September 17th, this is it. How important was that for you to like have an ironclad number in place? Because like you said, especially in this sport, you're, it's Monday. You just retired on Friday. And the feeling you have just because you're so used to it is that I want to freaking fight again. Like I'm content with the feeling, but I want to go fight again. Like how important was that for you? Because it's, it's hard to make that decision. 2018, you thought about it and then things changed. It was two more fights. It has to be two more fights. Like how important was that to actually put a solid number on it? I guess, honestly, I guess it's probably everything. Because yeah, uh, there's always going to be that voice in the back of your head that says, dude, you could do more. You're, you're, you're killing it in training. You know, you're getting better. The, the fact that you just did what you did um, for the, the, the second title, two division champion for CES, like nobody's done that. You got to defend them. You got to defend both. You got to, you can keep going. And I know I can. That's the frustrating part. <laughs> the frustrating part is like, you're retiring on top. You're retiring after a lot. People can't ask me like, dude, that's the best performance you've ever had. And I'm like, I know, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> you know, and it's like uh, it's very, 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 very few people can do that. Very few people can just hang it up after uh, something like that. They wait too long. They lose two, three. They become BJ Penn. They become Anderson Silva or they're just losing all the time. Chuck Liddell, you know, it's, and nobody wants to see that. And I never wanted that to happen to me because, you know, time is undefeated. Time is undefeated. If you you've waited along, uh, wait around too long, you know the the younger, hungrier, faster guys they're going to catch up as you get slower. You know, it's just like if you're up here and they're down here. After a while, you're going to come down and they're going to go up. It's just it's how it is. Time is undefeated. So um, I didn't want to fall into that. So I guess um, you know making that definitive decision to make September seventeenth my last fight was crucial. Like you said, it was a tremendous performance. You look great, dominant. You locked the triangle in on the third. He tapped, and then all that emotion came out of you. Like you said, it's all everything. Just the, the freedom, the weight lifted off of your shoulders. Yeah. And I've seen you finish fights before 
there's excitement. Sometimes you're a little bit stoic in there and making, fo- you know, gr- great will politics, great photos of the aftermath. You're making weird faces and there's blood everywhere, but this was obviously very emotional. So outside of just weight flying off of your shoulders, like how would you describe <laughs> the feeling that came over you on Friday night once you tapped? Yeah, it was, it was, uh, like I said, during the fight, I don't think about that at all. Um, and as soon <laughs> It was as soon as he tapped, I didn't think about the fight at all. All I thought about was the release. It was just like instantaneous where I was like, you're done. No more stress. Like you don't have to think about, you don't have to like, as soon as you're done, you don't go in the back, like who's next, what's next, you know, got to get back to training. It's just like this never, it seemed seemingly never ending grind, seemingly never ending like mind fuck of like just this battle that goes on in your head. Like who's next, how the fight going to go. It's, it's so fucking stressful, man. If you've, (laughs) it's so stressful, but all you do, is like, it's like a drug me. You just want more and more. And, uh, it's crazy. Like there are people that have, you know, a hundred (laughs) fights. How do you go through that constantly? I don't know how I went through it for 36 fights. It's, it's a lot, bro. And like, people ask me at like five, eight, 10, 12 fights, they're like, I'm still nervous, man. I don't know if I could do this. Like, how do you do it? Like, how do you stay stoic? How do you stay, you know, uh, at ease? I'm like, I don't, you just fucking figure it out, man. Um, it's, it, it doesn't get easier. You just know what to expect is what it is. You know, um, like sprinting before fights, it sucks, but you just know what to expect. Um, so you just embrace it. You just go in there knowing like exactly what's going to happen. Uh, it, all you're going to think about is cutting the weight. Once you get the, you cut the weight, you're going to feel really good about making the weight. You're going to eat after your first meal. You're going to go, okay. And your focus switches. Everybody else at the table is like, oh, I'm so happy. Like cutting weight, you're fighting tomorrow. And then all of a sudden, like you were happy. And now you're like focused. You know what I mean? And then you go to bed that night and like, you're okay. But as soon as if you wake up during the middle of the night, fuck going back to bed. Cause now you, you're like, and I got 14 hours before the fight. Can I sleep? And you're trying to nap during the day. You're like, am I going to be able to nap? Like, what, how's this fight going to go? It doesn't matter who you're fighting. You could be fighting Diego Nunez or you could be fighting, uh, who's my first fight? Uh, Christian Correa, you know, you could be fighting the, the top, the bottom, whatever. You're, you still have those same nerves and there's nothing you could do about it. Fight one, fight 36, they're going to be there. You just got to embrace it. How did you sleep Thursday night? Uh, Thursday night, I slept up well, I was in my own bed, so it was nice. <laughs> uh, but my daughter has had, uh, um, a, a little cold stuff, just super stuffy the past two weeks. And she has woken up countless times throughout the night, every night for two weeks. So, um, my wife and her, were going to go sleep at, uh, her mom's, but that changed. So they slept at the house. So I woke up five, six times. I didn't sleep for crap Thursday night. And it was just like, whatever it is, what it is. Like she's my daughter, you know, at the end of the day, it's just one fight for the rest of my life. And I, you know, I'm I'm dad for the rest of her life. So, um, that's, that's number one. I got to make sure she's okay. So I didn't, you know, I didn't go sleep in a, uh, I didn't go sleep at a, um, a hotel or, you know, ask Ashley to leave or anything like that. It's just like, you deal with it. You know, the pre-fight, uh, pre-fight stressors. And then after the win, you get a nice send off from your friends, teammates, fans. What was that like? The, uh, the, the post fight mangler after party. <laughs> What's funny is, uh, was it like two, three days before the weigh-ins? My, co- <laughs> my coach, uh, in this group message with, uh, my wife and Jeff and um, Hey, just want to let you know that there is a surprise party for you right after the fights. Um, only 100 people can go because of COVID. Um, but we didn't know exactly who to invite, who you wanted. So here you go. And I'm like, the fuck? <laughs> I'm like, dude, I got a fight coming up. My last fight, you're going to, you're going to put this on me. So now I'm going to invite like only hundred people. I got to make sure that they show up. I got to do like, what are you doing, bro? And like, it was funny, but obnoxious at the same time. Um, but we probably had like, I don't know, roughly to 60 to 80 people, uh, in and out throughout most of the time. So. It was a, it was a perfect number and it was really, really cool. Russell did this perfect speech. The guy's, the guy's amazing. One of my best friends, um, shout out to Russell leak. Um, he did a a really, really good speech. It was really nice. And then he goes, 
all right, I'm going to turn the floor over to Matt. I was like, all right, do another speech, I guess. <laughs> so I had said some nice words and then uh, that was that. It was just, I uh, have a couple of drinks, have some food and uh, yeah. Awesome night. Yeah. Russell, I, I, I was the ring announcer for the last ammo card and Russell cornered a few fighters and dude motivated me, man. I got up and yelled into that microphone after hearing Russell give some corner advice to his rounds, man. That guy's a motivator. Is he not? He's got some, uh, he's a veteran. <laughs> he's cornered a couple of fights at the lowest level and the highest level. A lot of guys that have just fought their first fight at the very lowest level of amateur. He's cornered a ton of uh, just regular smoker fights. But even then, like Russell was talking to me last week, he's like, um, you watch somebody win their first smoker. Like my, my brother-in-law, Dominic, uh, he won his first smoker and he was so pumped. And Russell said, you do a lot of times, uh, you put your time in with a guy like that. Who's just in here every day busting his ass and he has his first smoker fight and it's not even sanctioned, you know, it's just like go out there and, and do what you can. And he gets a victory and like, you feel more rewarded after, uh, you know, after he wins and after the seeing him go through those emotions and, and being excited and proud of himself, you get more, uh, from that than you would me after my first UFC fight. You know, it's like, those are two entirely different things on the spectrum, but at the same time, like I get it, I get it. That first fight is pretty amazing. We saw Russell on ESPN plus a couple of weeks ago because he was cornering Carlos Candelario who yep. fought on the contender series. Once again, lost a close decision. I thought he won that fight. I think everybody who watched that fight thought he won that fight and yeah. he gets a contract anyways, which is pretty cool. So you seeing that all play out and watching Carlos after everything he's gone through since the first time he's on the contender series to bounce back, fight, get a win for CES after the long layoff. And then like a week and a half, a couple weeks later, go on to the contender series and get a contract. What was that like for you to watch? That was awesome, man. That kid puts in, he's, he's, an, he's just like me in a sense, like he just shuts up and works, show up, shut up, work. That's it, man. Um, like, I think we're both different people during training too. Um, I'd like to think of myself as a goofball, someone who's just constantly playful. Um, and I think Carlos is very, very loving, very playful as well. But then when it's, it's time to train, it's just like laser, like focus, you're, you're, you're there for a reason. You're there to get better. And I honestly, I hope that's a little different now that I'm done fighting. <laughs> I hope that I'm a little bit like more approachable. Um, but you know, um, he works, man. He, he just shows up and he works. Um, and, uh, to see something cause he's had, he's had a lot of adversity over the years too. He's broken his arm during grappling competitions. Uh, he's obviously tore his ACL in a fight. He's had, uh, several different things happen during fights, during training that have put him on the fighting on the back burner over time. And he has had to, he's had this X amount of years training and competing, but only, uh, nine fights now, nine fights, right? Yeah, I think he's nine fights. Um, he could have fought more, could, competed more had he been injury free. So, but like, like I said, he just throws some Windex on it and just gets back in the gym. You know, it's, it's a, shut up and train mentality, shut up and fight mentality. He's got that too. So it's, it's good to see him uh, achieve what he's always set out to achieve. So the door opens for him, professional MMA, that door closes for you. Decision made, professional MMA career is over. You know, this is a question everyone asks in time like these, and you said you're content and you don't want to be that guy that keeps bouncing back and forth. But can you definitively say 100% you fought your final fight? Nothing <laughs> will ever get you back. Yeah. So the, there's yes, I can. And the reason I say that is because, um, two reasons, uh, one, because my, my job is incredibly time consuming. Um, and a lot of times I'm with my daughter first shift. I work second shift. As soon as my wife gets home, I leave. And then a lot of times I'm drafted to third shift. Also I'll be up for over 24 hours at a time. So if I didn't train during that day that I was with my, my daughter while she slept, now I'm not training for two or three days in a row because I have to sleep the next day. And then the following day I'm dead, exhausted, tired, and I might get drafted again. Um, so like time is just like a lot of times, you know, if I'm working seven days in a row or nine days out of 10, uh, my training schedule is all over the place. Uh, so, and it's, it's really, really challenging. Uh, the past two fights, I was my own training partner for 90% of the time I was downstairs busting my ass as hard, hitting as hard as I could for as long as I could on the, on the heavy bag. I'd do like one 60 minute round as hard as I could the whole time or six, 10 minute rounds with a minute rest in between 
or like, uh, you know, um, interval incline or interval, um, bike sprints or, you know, some sort of high intensity, uh, lifting, um, mixed with bike sprints downstairs, something to like, that I <clears throat> needed to, uh, simulate myself without somebody else, which is obviously very challenging. And the, the second thing is, and the most important thing is I hate leaving my daughter. I hate it. It's, it sucks, man, because like, you know, you, you go to work, that's one thing you have to do it. It's, it's, you know, it's some, something you have to do. I don't have to fight, you know? And I always in my head now that I have her, it's just like, she's like, bye, dad. I love you, dad. I love you, dad. Can I wave bye? And it's like, fuck my life. And it's, you know, I've, I've done this for me for so long. Uh, and uh, it, every time I would leave, she's two and a half now. Every time I would leave, it felt so selfish. And um, I knew that, uh, you know, you can't do that forever. And uh, it hurt me. <laughs> and I don't want to make, I don't want to, I don't want her to be old enough to realize that it hurts her too. So I'm done. Good for you, man. So you're, you're happy with this decision. You're content. You're, you're, you're not a guy who lives with, with a lot of regret in my eyes, the many conversations, not a lot of regret (laughs) coming from you. And you fought for some of the the highest level regional promotions. You fought for the two biggest promotions in the world multiple times. Do you have any, like, I don't know if regrets the word I'm looking for, but is there anything you wish you could have done in MMA that you didn't get the chance to? Yeah. Uh, won all of my fights. <laughs> I wish I never lost. That'd be sweet. Um, no, uh, <laughs> you know, my only goal I think was to reach the pinnacle of the sport, that being the UFC and fighting the UFC. And I did that. But as soon as I it was honestly, like, as soon as I signed the contract to fight in the UFC, I was like, fuck, I got one more goal now and that's winning the UFC. So, uh, the first fight was really challenging. Obviously I took the fight on six days notice had to cut, uh, 20 something pounds in five days, which fucking blew. And, uh, and then my, okay. So here you go. I'm going to say this because I, but I never told anybody this except for like my close, close training partners, maybe my coach, um, and my wife, but I've had a fully torn ACL since 2016. Um, and yep, fully torn. And, uh, I just, I'd fought and it was really bad for, uh, the Peterson fight. I actually tore my medial and lateral meniscus, um, and my MCL the day before signing the contract to fight Peterson. Um, but that was my only job at the time. So daddy's got to come home with money, just how it is. If you don't, you know, had I taken X amount of time off, then I'm not making money. My wife's having to work more having to either do a crazy amount of privates or whatever. It's just a lot of, uh, last stress that comes with that. And like I said, as soon as, as soon as I got, uh, as soon as I finished that reverse triangle, like a lot of stress and relief was lifted. There's many, there's many, many layers to that, that answer. Right. So, um, yeah, I mean, I've been fighting on, uh, one and one and a half legs for, uh, what, five years, probably a little five years now. Jeez, man. Are you going to get, we're going to get this fixed now, right? We're going to get this all fixed. No, maybe. Honestly, I don't know. I don't, I don't know because, uh, honest, I've, I've, I got the, the muscle around it, uh, doing what it's doing. I'm, I'm walking a little differently. My bow leg is a little bit more on fleek. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. Honestly, I don't, uh, I don't want to be out for a year. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Maybe, maybe when I'm older, maybe. Then you got guys like Forrest Griffin who just, he, his, his, his tour fully too. And he just never got it fixed and, uh, he dealt with it, you know? So fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Favorite fight of your career. Like you've had some battles, you've had fights of the year in new England the, in the Mangler catalog of fights. What's, what's, what's chapter one? I dropped my phone. It's all good. Um, I, I made this list the other day or actually uh, the other week for people. Um, but it's, I guess it's changed now. <laughs> I don't, that was number one. Friday was number that, one. That, that, yeah. That's the new number one. Um, and I think because of just all the implications that came along with it, how the fight went, how I felt I performed, 
um, how I felt before the fight, where it was, when it was, and the retirement involved and all the reasons leading up to that uh, decision of retirement. Yeah, just so much that came along with that. Number two being Diego Nunez. Yeah. Number three probably being uh, Anthony Caponis. Uh, Anthony broke my nose six minutes into the fight, and I went in, went on to win a very razor close uh, split decision in 25 minute fight. There was blood all over the place, all over the place. And uh, after the fight, it was almost like you're expecting people to, like be cheering and like and amped and like they were, but it was kind of golf clapping because they're like they just witnessed a fucking an absolute war. So there's like. <laughs> Who won? What the hell just happened? That was insane. And uh, you know he's limping off into the, the into the corner because he's. I just kicked him in the leg like thirty times. His blaze leg was like black for a week. Um, and my my nose is jacked up. There's blood all over the place. And I look up at the crowd and I. The first thing that popped in my head was blow a snot rocket of blood, make a smiley face with it. So I was like. Pfft. And I just go, I made a smiley face and everybody goes, ah, I just started dying, like just so happy. So I was like, and there were pictures of that smiley face and blood for a while. I don't know where it went, but uh, yeah, that was at the Plymouth Memorial Hall. It's like uh, the old Coliseum style uh, fights. That was, uh, that was a great, that was a great place to fight. Is that the fight you feel you grew the most from, or is there a different fight that, that takes that spot? Well, that was the first one that I had shown everybody really who I was, that kind of adversity, overcoming kind of adversity during the fight. Um, and I think once people saw that, they're like, oh, wow, this kid's he's he's he can win. He's talented. He's got a lot of fight in him, but also like he don't he don't quit. Um, so I think that was like a, an eye opener for a lot of fans. Um, but I always knew who I was. And then last, last question for me, um, a pony you wish you had the chance to fight that you didn't get to fight. Come on. <laughs> Come on. I mean, we, we know it's Bruce, but we know it's Bruce, Come but on. like dream matchup. I don't think, would you consider Bruce like the dream matchup? No, I just wanted to fuck him up. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I wanted. I just wanted to fuck him up. Listen, I'm going to say this before I answer that question. Um, I don't, I'm not going to say names. But somebody important came up to me after the fight and they said, listen, Maddie, completely straight faced. Listen, Maddie, if you showed up like that to fight Boynton, you would have completely fucked him up. And I was like, I know. This is what I've been telling you. This is like, I, I know. And they're like, oh man, I just never seen you like that. And I'm like, I would have fucked him up. And he goes, yeah, you would have fucked him up. Like without smiling, just like, and I was like, ah, fuck, I wish I had that fight. But I mean, I, I guess other than that, <laughs> other than the obvious answer, uh, who do I wish I fought? Um, hmm. Uh, Charles Rosa in the UFC. Yeah. That would have been fun. Yep. Uh, Charles, I have a lot of respect for him. I have a lot of respect for him. There's no hate whatsoever for Charles. He works very, very hard. Um, he always comes to entertain, um, a lot like myself in that respect. Uh, he's a gamer, bro. He's got a lot of submissions. He's got knockouts, uh, great cardio, uh, striking and, uh, striking and wrestling and, um, and grappling to boot. Uh, I think that would have been a phenomenal fight. And I think that's one fight that, uh, that I guess I, that wish ha that I wish happened. Um, in the UFC, even I asked uh, Shelby for that fight a few times, but uh, it just it, it fizzled. Actually, I think I asked for the fight um, after, or either like right before my my second fight, or, or right after the second fight or something. But um, yeah, it didn't work out. That would have been a cool fight. It would have been a cool fight, New England versus New England. But yeah. Matt, c congratulations on everything, man. Good for you. You you like you said, you're you're content. I don't think just a lot of times I have these post retirement conversations and I'm like, eh, he's coming back. I have, I, I don't think you're coming back. So I, I, I believe you when you say you're done, uh, the reasons for it very clear and, uh, they make a ton of sense to me. So congratulations on the win. And I, I told the story on one of our podcasts the other day that 
early on when I was getting my feet wet in this crazy sport of ours, trying to get to where I am at, not a lot of people gave me the opportunity to, to interview them. And you were one of the guys that said, fuck it. Let's go. Let's have a and conversation. Look now, bro. And look, look at us now, know. Matt, we're bald. Oh, yeah. We're got beards. <laughs> we're, we're li- We got families. Now we're living the dream, Matt. We're living Hell the damn yeah. dream. Bald with beards, but we have families. So that's right. Somebody <laughs> loves us. <laughs> <laughs> but congratulations on everything, man. It's uh, it, it, those days stick out to me. I remember that first conversation to see where you're at now, to see that performance and see you go out on your own terms with two titles. Phenomenal stuff, man. Congratulations on everything. And, uh, when, when are we going to hear the news on these big doors that, that, that you're not going to address specifically here? Soon. Soon. All right. Yeah. Soon. Not super, super soon, but soon. Yeah. It's coming. Soon, soon-ish. 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 All right, man. Well, good Maybe for you, man. Month, month-ish. Month. <laughs> ish. Ish. We'll ish. Something we'll ish. See. Good stuff, man. Yeah. Thank you again for the time. And uh, thank you for all the great performances and the great fights over the years. Yeah, Mike. Thanks for uh, thanks for this, man. Good talking.